In this video, we'll be going through our amides and our amines, the naming and some of their reactions. So to begin, amines, just like alcohols, can be primary, secondary, or tertiary. Right, so if you have a nitrogen, nitrogen can only have three bonds, unlike carbon, right? So carbon looks like this, nitrogen looks like this, oxygen looks like this, right? So those are our three big um, elements that we need to understand their binding. So nitrogens have three groups. It can be hydrogens or anything other than hydrogens, represented by R. So Amines can have uh, primary, secondary, or tertiary structures. Primary, meaning that there's only one R group and two hydrogens. Secondary, meaning that there are uh, two R groups and a hydrogen. And tertiary, meaning that there are three R groups. So, in naming an amine, it's almost like an ether, in that you have your three groups, and you name one, two, three, and then put amine at the end. So, simple amine naming would be as such. You had a nitrogen with CH3, CH2 attached here, and then CH, CH3, CH3. Without using alphabetical order, you name the groups, and you put the word amine at the end of the name. So we have an ethyl group here. And you have your isopropyl group here. And so to name it, it would be ethyl isopropyl amine. If there's also an alcohol in the structure, and I'll begin using shorthand for the carbon structures. So looking at this structure, on the first carbon, we have an amine. On the second group, we have an alcohol. Now, when naming, the alcohol will always have the last name, unless it's coupled to an ester or a carboxylic acid or anything else with a carbonyl group. So instead of using amine, if this is not the uh, main functional group, instead of calling it amine, we call it amino. And remember it's on position one. Now remember there are four carbons. One, two, three, four. So we know it's a butte. The parent chain comes in with the alcohol. So we know that it's two, and it's all single bonds, and the alcohol. So it's two butanol, and the amino is on group one, so it'd be one amino to butanol. Next, all of these have had the amine group in one specific location, and the attachments have been without question attached to the nitrogen. So what if, for example, we had this benzene ring, and attached we had this nitrogen with a methyl and an ethyl group. How would we name this structure? Pause the video and try to name it. To begin naming this structure, if we were to simply say methyl, ethyl, benzene, amine, which is completely wrong, you would have no idea where the methyl or the ethyl groups are. Looking at this structure, we can clearly see that the methyl is attached to the nitrogen as well as the ethyl group. So we have to uh, use some sort of symbol to tell us where those are located. Now, for the base structure, whenever you have a benzene ring 
with a nitrogen attached, we give that a certain name. It is based off of, it's named off the compound discussed earlier, aniline, which is drawn as such. Your benzene ring with an NH2. This is your aniline base. So, somehow we need to sim uh, show where these ethyl and methyl and ethyl groups are located. To do that with naming, we named this parent structure as aniline, and we say N N ethyl methyl aniline. This shows us that the ethyl and the methyl groups are attached to the nitrogen, which is then attached to the aniline as a whole. Keep in mind that you can also say N-ethyl and methyl aniline. Whether you say N-N or split them up before each term is exactly the same. It does not matter. For amines, there are two basic reactions, to turn them into amides and to turn them into salts. So the first one, to, to make a salt, you simply take an amine and add HCl. When you add HCl, you then get your ammonium, your ammonium salt. So you'd have CH3 and H plus minus Cl. This is one of the easiest reactions you'll find on your exam. Whenever you have an amine plus an acid, you add a hydrogen and you show the salt compounds. Now we'll get into amides. Amides are pretty similar to, similar to amines, except they're attached to a carbonyl group. So first, let's draw a sample structure. This is the base formula for an amide. You have your carbonyl in the middle, your R group on one side, and your amine group on the other side. With naming, you simply name the molecule by writing amide at the end of it. So, for example, if we had our benzene ring, we have our carbonyl group here, and an NH2, this would simply be called Benzamide. Before we begin the reactions of amides, let's name this last structure. As you can see, there's a four carbon base, an amide group, and two attachments to the amide group. So the amide as a whole will be the parent chain. So we have one, two, three, four carbons with an amide. So right away, we know that we can name this structure butan amide. Now we have to show where the methyl and the ethyl groups are. Just like before, we write N, N, ethyl, methyl, butanamide. That way, we know that when reading the name structure, the NN shows that the ethyl and the methyl groups are attached directly to the nitrogen and not to the butane chain. To prepare amides, in the lab it's quite difficult, but in the body, enzymes are used. In alcohol, Actually, in other words, um, to make an amide, a carboxylic acid plus an amine are used to make an amide. A sample reaction would be C 
acetic acid plus this amine, and it would give us the following structure. Now, just the same as before, we have to figure out what adds where. Just like with our ester reactions, water is lost in the reaction. So we lose one of the hydrogens here, and this OH here, and water is given off. Then, this carbon is directly bound to the nitrogen. Therefore, our final answer should look like this. With the nitrogen, and we still have our methyl group that was originally there, along with the hydrogen as well. Our last reaction deals with the acidic hydrolysis of amide. And we only have acidic hydrolysis of amides. There is no basic hydrolysis of amides in this class. So, hydrolysis once again uses water to cut the bond. So in other words, just like with esters, we're going backwards. So if our amide was this, If we were to treat it with acid, it would split the amide bond here. We would take our water molecule, the hydrogen would go to the nitrogen, and the OH would come back to form the acid. The reaction is just going in reverse. So if you know that a carboxylic acid plus an amine make an amide, then breaking up an amide should give you a carboxylic acid and an amine. Therefore, our final answer are what we, is what we had originally. That concludes our organic reactions and our naming. The last and final video will deal with amino acids and the pHs that they are in and how to draw them.